Hello citizens and welcome back. In today's video I would like to talk about NPC gunners, AI blades, closing weapon systems and third accuracy in general. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. If you're interested in supporting the channel, consider becoming a patron or a channel member on YouTube. Okay, let's start with some basic terminology. What is a closing weapon system? A closing weapon system is a form of active defense as opposed to passive defense such as flares. This term is commonly abbreviated as CIWS, or CWIS as sailors like to call it, or also known as CRAM by ground forces. The abbreviation of CRAM is actually more explanatory as it stands for Counter Rocket Artillery and Mortar, meaning that this is a system that is designed to intercept projectiles such as missiles, artillery and mortar rounds or even planes before they reach their target. The best known real life examples are the ship mounted phalanx and its ground based cousin the centurion. These two use a 20mm multi barrel cannon guided by a radar to shoot down incoming projectiles and planes. There is also a missile variant called the CRAM which utilizes the same radar but it has missiles, which offer better range and accuracy. The main reason these are considered to be so good, at least according to the information I can find, is that they are very effective and more or less autonomous and not dependent on the ship's sensors. If any of you watching know more about this, feel free to correct me in the comments. Also it seems that on newer ships the missile based platform is preferred, probably because of the longer range. At this point all of you are probably thinking, Space Coder this is very cool but why is this important? Well, some ships in Star Citizen will have similar systems mounted on them to intercept missiles, and supposedly automating turrets will achieve similar results as well. But before we get to NPC gunners and AI blades, let's take a look at the already implemented automated turrets in the verse. I am of course talking about the turrets defending stations and outposts. Currently we have three types. The small energy turrets, small missile turrets and large ballistic turrets. The first two generally follow real life. The large ballistic turrets I believe are there only to strike large targets effectively. And that is where the similarities end. I think we can all agree that these turrets absolutely suck. I have never actually seen the station turrets hit anything. This is largely due to two main problems. First one is density. You would expect certain locations to have more of such turrets, enough where it would be impossible for a small ship to approach without permission and survive. I believe this actually boils down to balance and performance, but I digress. The second problem is desync and performance. The servers might sometimes be too slow to provide the turrets with accurate information on where the target is, and that makes them ineffective. I am curious to see whether this will improve once persistent entity streaming and server meshing are implemented and stable. Some of you might also argue that CAG might be making these turrets ineffective on purpose, for balance reasons and to promote players defending these locations as well as NPC security reinforcements arriving in ships. And my counter argument is that player bases will be using the same turrets or at least the same turret technology and thus be more or less useless. So what is the incentive for players to build them as defenses and thus why should individual players of small groups build bases in the first place if they need a whole squadron to effectively defend them? And also if automated turrets are extremely ineffective, what's the point of using AI blades to create them on our ships? Same applies for NPC gunners. Now in this case, CAG might intend for players to prefer player man turrets over AI blades and NPCs, which is fair but it takes away choice and that's a bad idea. However, as I said, I think that most issues with automated turrets are currently due to desync and poor performance. There is also the ongoing issue with fixed weapons not converging properly, which affects all turrets, which might be at play as well. But how difficult is it actually to implement an automated turret? Well, it boils down to finding the intercept between one moving object, the target, and another moving object, the projectile fired at the target. And the math to do this is pretty complicated, at least for me, but it can be done. Actually, let me know in the comments if you would like to see me throw together a demo of this. Also, CAG have already done this, as missiles and targeting pips probably use similar math, so it should be fairly easy for CAG to reuse this for turrets, which I think they did. And they could also introduce some kind of margin of error based on the NPC gunner's skill, properties of the AI blade and external factors such as jamming. And now we finally get to the importance of point defense systems or close-in defense systems for our ships. As mentioned before, some ships already have these, but I actually think that they should be standard on most larger ships. Which brings two questions, what form should it take and what should be the balance? Well, if we take an example from real life, we can choose from either a gun based solution or a missile based solution. Considering CAG wants close ship to ship combat, I think a gun solution would work better. 
Also, it looks better and I think it's easier to implement using current systems. To create a similar missile solution, we would probably need something like size 0 missiles and new launchers and probably reworked missile tech. Okay, so now that we have decided on guns, what ships should have this? Well, in real life it seems that most frigate-sized military ships have some kind of a close-in defense system. Now, this is not very helpful, but I think the reasonable choice here would be that any ship in Star Citizen that can't easily outmaneuver a missile should have some active defense, which I think effectively narrows it down to anything about freelancer size or bigger. Also, I think that most ships would only need to have one or two such systems on them. I think this would also put some pressure on the pilot to maneuver in a way that would make them the most effective. Now, there is the question of whether these close-in weapons should only strike missiles or also other targets. There is an argument for both, but I think CAG's goal is for manned turrets or remote turrets to fight other ships. And I believe that ships that already have close-in defenses in their designs, such as the Phoenix and the Perseus, specifically state that they are against incoming missiles and torpedoes only. On the other hand, I would argue that they should be able to attack any incoming hostile target, however they should be the most effective against missiles and torpedoes and less effective against other ships. And this can actually be achieved with existing systems. After selecting suitable ships for applying the new systems, it would be a very good first step to create a separate capacitor for defensive weapons. This would make balancing easier later on, plus it would add another layer to resource management on large ships which should be beneficial as well. Then there's the matter of weapons. Since we're using capacitors, energy weapons are the weapon of choice here. CAG actually have a separate class of weapons for our purpose here. I suppose we could call them size 0 weapons. And I think this is acceptable, even including what I mentioned earlier. These would be very fast firing weapons with very low damage that would be very effective against incoming ordnance but not so effective against other ships. And I think that would strike a pretty reasonable balance. And now you might think that this all puts the advantage in the hands of the defender. And on the surface you are not wrong. However, seeing as most ships will only have one or two of these weapons with limited capacitor charge, it will be possible to overwhelm the system. So more emphasis will have to be placed on preparing correctly and maneuvering. Now, of course, I can imagine larger ships and especially military ships having more of these guns as they are designed to take that punch. But that is again subject to balance and I am actually even open to this being an optional component on non-military ships where you have to buy it and dedicate some computer power to it. And with that being said, that's it for tonight. What do you think? Is this a good idea? Should close-in weapon systems be only present on military ships or should all ships have access? What is the ideal balance? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Fly safe and I will see you in the verse.